Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where success is bred from obscurity. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> now, welcome, Liz and Becky. You are our first pair on the show today. How do you two know each other? We're sisters. You're sisters. Where are you from? We're from Preston in Lancashire. Preston in Lancashire. What do you do, Liz? I'm a medical sales rep. A medical sales rep and Becky? Online marketing specialist. Online specialist? Specialist, yeah. Specialist. How I added that you... bit myself. <laughs> Are the people from, from work watching now thinking, she's not a specialist. <laughs> well, if <laughs> she, well, she's a specialist, <laughs> I'm a specialist. <laughs> uh, well, listen, I hope you do especially well on the show this afternoon. Great to have you here. You. Then we welcome back Louise and Chris, who were on the show last time. Everyone, of course, gets two shots at the Pointless final. This is your second and final chance. Louise, tell us how you did. Yeah, we were confident, weren't we, all the way yeah. until we were, you know, kicked off. It was a head-to-head? -head. Uh, yes, yes. What was the dance that you thought they oh, did? merengue. The merengue. I can hardly even say it. You want to get onto the I'm dance gonna, council. I am. Best of luck on the show. Then we welcome Leslie and Angela. How do you two know each other? We're best friends. We've been best friends for 40 years. God, you, that's the best of best friends. <laughs> How did you meet? Yeah, we met at work. You first, met at work? First day at work, yes. First day at work. Yeah. How lovely. Well, very best of luck this afternoon. And finally, we welcome back Kath and Stephen. You were also on the show last time. Remind us how you did, Stephen. Kath did very well, got a pointless answer. You don't need to tell me that. <laughs> she got a pointless answer, Stephen. I'm sure I don't need to remind you what I did. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it was, it was round one. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid. There's no ignominy leaving the show in round one. Um, Round ones are notoriously hard. You either know the subject or you don't, and you didn't. But uh, <laughs> this time round, I feel sure that you're going you're to be with us much, much longer. I hope so, anyway. Uh, best of luck on the show. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. There's just one more person for me to introduce. He's a man who's an artisan of obscurities. He is my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hello. <laughs> An artisan of obscurity. What does that mean? You wear a, you don't tuck your shirt in and work late at night and drink heavily and tinker away on your obscurity. Well, of those things you say, I do drink heavily. I would admit to that. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got two returning uh, pairs today. Louise and Chris, of course, did very well last time, got through to the head-to-head, -head, so they'll be a force to be reckoned with. But I do think that Stephen has something to prove. Kath, obviously, we know is brilliant already. Stephen, I think, fears that if last time were all he were remembered for, we wouldn't remember him too well. I think he's going to um, storm through this show and go all the way, I suspect. So a tough show for our, our new pairs, I think. Lots of sort of TV and films and sports, which is what people always say they want. So lots of those in today's show. OK, well, we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. Now, to stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. What everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and every time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we will add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £3,500. Enormous sum of money. Right, let's play pointless. OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, our category for the first round is... Cartoon characters. Cartoon characters. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many characters in the Jungle Book as they could. Characters in the Jungle Book, Richard. Yeah, all the correct answers here are named characters credited in the 1967 Disney movie, The Jungle Book. Now, Liz and Becky, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. So in this round, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers on the board in each pass. The first set of seven answers reads like this. Shere Khan, King Louis, Gunga Din, Mowgli, Shenzi, Colonel Hathi, Dizzy. I'll read those again. 
Shere Khan, King Louis, Gungadin, Mowgli, Shenzi, Colonel Hafi, Dizzy. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but you have to be very careful because there is also at least one incorrect answer on that board. If you pick an incorrect answer, you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, Liz. OK, I'm going to be brave and be brave. I'm going to go for Gunga Din. Let's see if Gunga Din is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Gunga Din. Oh. Bad luck. Liz, I'm afraid oh, Gunga Din no. is an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points, Richard. Yeah, sorry about that, Liz. Uh, oh, Gunga Din, he is, a, he is a Kipling character, of course, but from the poem Gunga Din. Ah, oh, well. Louise. Yes. Louise, Louise, you know the Jungle Book. I do. I know the main characters. Yes. So I am going to guess the pointless, hopefully the pointless one is Shenzi. Shenzi. Mm -hmm. Tell me who Shenzi is in the film. Uh, he's um, a... Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> is it a guess? Yes. Or it is a guess. <laughs> OK, well, let's see if Shenzi is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Shenzi. Fingers crossed. Ooh, bad luck. That is an incorrect answer, Louise. I'm afraid that scores you 100 points. But you're in good company. <laughs> just think how much worse it would be if there's just one of you way out in front. There are two of you. Two incorrect answers in two goes. I know, what a, what, what a start. Shenzi uh, is the hyena from The Lion King, voiced by Whoopi Goldberg. That's Shenzi. Leslie. You know The Jungle Book, don't you, Leslie? Have Never read it? the book. Never, read the Never book. saw the film. Never saw the film. However, listen, I don't think you can put a foot wrong here. That's my opinion. There could be another incorrect answer there, but I'd be, I think it'd be very harsh. There most certainly is a pointless answer in there. Find that one, and we will add 250 quid to the jackpot, and you will score nothing. Well, I'm going to go for Dizzy. It's a bit like me. <laughs> dizzy. Not remotely dizzy, Liz. Let's see if Dizzy is a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said Dizzy. It's right. Down it goes. Way down. Right down to the <laughs> That is a pointless answer, Dizzy. And it adds £250 to our jackpot, taking the total to £3,750. <laughs> and best of all, Leslie, it scores you nothing. Richard. Yeah, very well done. Do you know who Dizzy was, Leslie? No. Oh, I'm, af I'm afraid we can't give you zero points then. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of the vultures. One of the vultures in there. They were written to be uh, vo voiced by the Beatles, yeah. Mm. And then the Beatles couldn't do it. Correct. Or just didn't fancy it. I think they didn't fancy it, yeah. And uh, four people did some really, really poor Liverpudlian accents. I was, I was one of them. That's, uh, <laughs> that's awkward. Oh, that is awkward. <laughs> OK, we are looking for characters in The Jungle Book. Kath, top that, if you can. Um, Shere Khan is the tiger. Mm. Uh, King Louis is the ape that sings. Uh, Mowgli is the young boy. Mm -hmm. uh, but for my answer, I'm thinking about um, the elephant singing, so I'm going to go to all Colonel Hathi. Brilliant, Kath. Colonel Hathi. Well, let's see if that is a right answer. I have a hunch it might be. If it is, let's see how many people said it. Colonel Hathi. That's right. Oh, it's going to be a low scorer, this one. Four. Well done, Kath. That's a great answer. Colonel Hathi, Richard. Yeah, well played, Kath. Two very happy pairs at the end of the row there. Hathi is Hindi for elephant. So it's Colonel Elephant. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through the, Let's go through, well, go we through the rest of the board. Um, Shere Khan, as Kath rightly says, is the tiger. Would have scored a fairly hefty 41 points. Uh, Mowgli, it's called Mowgli in the film, would have scored you... 
70 points. It's the, the high score on the board. It's called Mowgli in the film. It was Mowgli in the original stories. And Kipling's daughter never forgave Walt Disney, apparently. For calling him Mowgli. For calling him Mowgli. Uh, and King Louis, of course, was uh, the orangutan. Also wasn't in the original stories because they're, they're not native to India, but would have scored you five points, so a very good answer. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Well, <laughs> two of the biggest scores you can possibly have. Uh, yes, Liz and Becky, Louise and Chris. Um, Leslie and Angela, lovely, pointless answer. Kath and Stephen, four, lovely low score there. Uh, so, yes, as I say, Becky and Chris each got a mountain to climb. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. We are looking for characters in the Jungle Book, and we have got... Buzzy, Carr, Kalinga, Baloo, Akela, Winifred and Bagheera. I'm going to read those again. Buzzy, Carr, Kalinga, Baloo, Akela, Winifred, Bagheera. And again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, and at least one of those answers is incorrect, so try and avoid those incorrect ones. Right now, Stephen. Calf. How well did she do? Four points. Well, I'm going to play very safe. You're going to have to play... Yeah, don't play too safe. You're on four. If you score 95 or less, 95 or less, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. So, Stephen, add 250 quid to the jackpot. No. Score uh, nothing. We're in safe. I'll go for Baloo. You're going to go for Baloo? Baloo. OK, we know Baloo. Here's your red line. Quite high up. Baloo gets you below there. You are through to the next round. Let's see if that's the right answer and how many people said Baloo. Right. 67. Takes your total up to 71. Richard. Baloo, of uh, course, sang Bear Necessities, and Baloo means bear in Hindi. It's a little theme developing there. OK, now, Angela. So we are looking for characters in the Jungle Book. You are on nothing. If you can score 99 or less with this answer, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. No bother. Leslie managed to find a pointless answer. Yes. Do you know the Jungle Book anything like as well as Leslie knows it? I know the Jungle Book, yes. Then we would like a double pointless, please. I think because Leslie went for Dizzy, which was one of the vultures, I'm going to go for Buzzy. There's your red line. It's just below the pink line. Doesn't have to travel very far, but maybe it might go all the way down if it's right. right. Let's see if it does. Is Buzzy a correct answer? It's right. Very, very good answer, Angela. I think this will be going all the way down. Yes, it is! Fantastic. Buzzy is a pointless answer. It adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total now up to £4,000. And it scores you nothing, giving you a grand total of nothing. Richard Buzzy. Yeah, very, very well played, uh, Angela, and impeccable logic, because it is one of the other vultures, Buzzy and Dizzy. It's also the name of one of my rabbits, Buzzy. Is yeah. it? Yep. What sort of rabbit is it? It's sort of like a white and grey one. Big, long, floppy ears? I think it's, it's got quite a medium floppy ears. It's not like a pedigree, like a rabbit you would have. <laughs> it's just like a rabbit, it's a normal rabbit. It's not like a show rabbit. <laughs> not one I of your fancy have a show, show rabbit. You do. No, I wouldn't. Well, you would have posher sort of... rabbits than me, is all I'm saying. I don't. Uh, well. Oh, yes, I would. Yes, you're quite right. I would. I would, I would. <laughs> Very good. Now, Chris. Louise scored an impressive 100 points. You are joint high scorers at this point. You have to score as low as you possibly can. Angela has found a pointless answer. There might easily be another pointless answer on that board. What do you think, Chris? Um, I have no idea about the Jungle Book. I'm going to go, total guess, Kalinga. Kalinga. Third name down, Kalinga. OK, well, let's see if that's a correct answer. Louise isn't entirely sure. <laughs> but she doesn't know anything. <laughs> She's seen what she said. OK, is Kalinga a correct answer? And if it is, how many people said it? Ooh. Sadly, Kalinga is an incorrect answer, Chris. It scores you 100 points, taking your total up to 200. Yeah, sorry, Chris. K uh, Kalinga is an area uh, of India. Now then, Becky, we are looking for characters in The Jungle Book. Well, you are currently on 100. You have to score 99 or less. Brilliant. 
<laughs> there might still be an incorrect answer on the board. Equally, might still be a pointless answer on the board. I've never seen the film <laughs> or no. read the book at all. Oh, dear. Um, but my nan was called Winifred, and it seems quite <laughs> random. <laughs> Words. So I don't know whether, but I'm just thinking, I don't know whether that would be in the film or not. It's quite random. So I think I will go for Baghira. Baghira. There's your red lines, just right up at the top there. If Baghira gets you below that red line, you are through to the next round. Baghira, let's see if it's right. It is right. <laughs> it is right, and down it goes. <laughs> Wonderful. Look at that, great low score, Becky, well done. Scores you 15, takes the total up to 115. Bagheera. Yeah, well played, Becky. Bagheera the panther, who, uh, who finds the, the boy cub Mowgli. Uh, and Bagheera in Hindi, of course, means panther. panther. Yeah, absolutely does. <laughs> Let's take a look at the rest of the board. So, Arkela is uh, the leader of the wolf pack. Uh, Would we'll have scored you nine points. You know what Arkela means in Hindi? Wolf. No, it means solitary. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Just when we're getting into it, they change it. Uh, Car, the snake up the top there, would have scored you six points. And do you think Winifred is a, is a pointless answer or an incorrect answer? I think it's a, it's a pointless answer. Do you think, despite the fact that we might just have named it after Becky's grandmother? Well, we might have done. I have a feeling it's Colonel Hathi's wife. Colonel Hathi's yes, wife. That's, right. that's, that's exactly correct. right. That's yeah. exactly right. It was a pointless answer, so very well done if you got that at home. Thanks, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score is Louise and Chris. Oh, what's good about that, though, is you each gave a really terrible answer. So um, <laughs> n there's not one of you who can, who can point the finger at the other. No. No. Or perhaps you both point the finger at the other <laughs> and, uh, and just argue all the way home. I'm not sure quite sure. <laughs> no, that's not right. Um, you've been wonderful, contestants. It's been great having you on the show. Sorry to say goodbye to you so soon, but thank you. Thank you. So for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. But it's now time to find out which two teams will be going through to the head-to-head -head for the chance to reach the pointless final. OK, the category for round two is... TV locations. You're not kidding, are you? Yeah. Oh, film and TV. TV locations. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Right, and the question concerns fictional locations and their shows. OK, in this round, we're about to show you some fictional locations in television programmes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to tell us which shows they feature in. OK, Richard? Yeah, we're going to give you six fictional locations. The more obscure ones will score you the fewer points. If you give us an incorrect answer, you'll score 100 points. And see if you can get all six of them at home. OK, your first six are... Warmington-on-Sea, New New York, Bedrock, Leatherbridge, Royston Vasey, Craggy Island. I'll read those one more time. Warmington-on-Sea, New New York, Bedrock, Leatherbridge, Royston Vasey, Craggy Island. OK, now, Becky, we are looking for the TV shows that these places feature in. How good are you at television? Do you watch a lot of television? I don't watch that much TV, no, but I do know one for sure, and I'm going to go with the one I know. OK. Sure. I think, well, I think I know. And Which what is, is Flintstone's that? Uh, Bedrock. OK, Flintstone's Bedrock, you are saying. Let's see if that is correct. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. It's right. 67. 67, that scores you, Richard. Yeah, it's a big, big score, isn't it? Of course, Sir Flintstone's the prehistoric city of bedrock. Now then, Angela. Angela, is this, is this to your taste, this round? Yes. Another strong round for... Well... <laughs> I, I'm trying to make some sort of Subo-type name out of your... Le... Lezang. 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 Yeah. <laughs> the lasagna. We can call you lasagna. If you like, I answer to most. Oh, well, obligingly, you're wearing the right sort of colours as well. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Angela, on behalf of the team lasagna, what are we going to have from you? Hmm. Well, I think um, I'm going to go for Craggy Island. 
Which is, of course, from... Father Ted, I think. Father Ted, you think. Right. Craggy Island Father Ted. Let's see if it's right. It is. Very good answer. Well done, Angela. That scores you 31. Richard. Yeah, another surprisingly high score for Craggy Island, I think. There is some, there's some dispute between two of the three Aran Islands off, uh, off County Galway as to which one is Craggy Island. Oh, well, there we are. Well done, Angela. Very good score. Now then, Kath, what's it going to be? Um, I think I'm going to go for Warmington on Sea. Which is from? Dad's Army. Dad's Army. Warmington on Sea. Dad's Army. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that. <laughs> 25. <laughs> a fabulous low score there, Kath. 25 for Dad's Army. Yeah, wonderful show and a very good score. It's all filmed in Thetford. Dad's in, army. in Norfolk? Yeah. That's Seriously? Thetford in Norfolk, yeah. And they've just uh, they unveiled a, a big statue of uh, Captain Mannering in Thetford very recently. Let's take a look at the other answers. Uh, Royston Vasey, do you know that? The League of Gentlemen. It is the League of Gentlemen. It's Roy Cubby Brown's real name, Royston Vasey. Scored you 19 points. Leatherbridge, it's from Doctors. That would have scored you 11 points. And New New York, do you know that? I don't know that it's one. Good. It's, uh, it's from Futurama. Uh, would have scored you five points. So it's the best answer on the board. Very well done if you've got New New York. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Ah, oh, Liz and Becky. Oh. Um, 67. You can redeem it, Liz. Mm -hmm. You can redeem that high score. 25. Fabulous low score from Kath. Stephen, hasn't she done brilliantly? Absolutely. You have to keep scoring low as well. Make sure you get through to the head-to-head. -head. Andrew and Leslie, Lasagna, fabulous <laughs> score there. Uh, on 31. Uh, keep up that low-scoring, Leslie, and I'm sure you will be in the head-to-head, -head, but anything can happen in the next pass. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more fictional locations from television programmes on the board, and here is your second six. We've got Cabot Cove, Lanford, Sunnydale, Summer Bay, Greendale, Wolford. Let me read those again. Cabot Cove, Lanford, Sunnydale, Summer Bay, Greendale, Wolford. And remember, we're looking for the TV shows that these places appear in. You're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Stephen is really panicking. <laughs> Do you know any of those? No. <laughs> A single, single one. <laughs> you're on 25. You're on the lowest score. If you can score 41 or less with this... You're through to the head-to-head, -head, I'll go for Walford. Mm-hmm. Which I think is EastEnders. It's a little-known programme. Not many people, I think... <laughs> I don't think many people would know it. Called EastEnders. Am I saying that right? EastEnders. East, East, yeah. EastEnders. You put the, yes, East. It comes from East, East End. Oh, I see. Oh, right, EastEnders. So East right. Enders, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. OK, well, um, here is your red line. If you get below that red line with EastEnders, you are definitely in the next round. It's not the end of the world if you're above that red line because the remaining pairs have yet to answer. But below that red line... Right, Wolford, EastEnders. How many people said it? 79. <laughs> not bad. That's 21 better than 100. Uh, that takes your total up to 104. Richard? It, although you did have a nice look of surprise on your face when you found out it was right, which is sweet. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, uh, Wolford is uh, set in the, the fictional postcode of E20 in the east end of London. OK, thanks very much. Leslie, Angela did fantastically well with Craggy Island. You are on 31. If you can score 72 or less with this answer, you are in the head-to-head. -head. What's it going to be? Well, <clears throat> I don't know a lot of them. I'm hoping Summer Bay is home and away. Summer Bay, you are saying home and away. If it is right and it gets you below that red line, you are in the head-to-head. -head. Summer Bay, home and away, is it correct? How many people said it? It's right. <laughs> 50 yeah. people knew that. You score 50, takes your total up to 81. You are through to the head-to-head. -head. Richard. Yeah, Summer Bay, very good. Safety through. It's filmed in the, the Palm Beach suburb of North Sydney. Now then, Liz. You are on 67. If you can score 36 or less, 
you are through to the head-to-head. -head. 36 or less. Do you think you can do that? If the one that I think I know is right, then I think it's probably quite mm. obscure. Um, so it's going to be Greendale, and I think it's Postman Pat. Greendale, Postman Pat. Becky, I think so. that was pride, that look there. <laughs> I think, that, I think that was pride. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what that look was. There's your red line. If you get below that red line, Greendale, Postman Pat, will see you through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if it's right. And how many people said Greendale, Postman Pat? <laughs> right. Oh dear, Stephen and Kath. Oh, dear. Very, very good answer, Liz. That scores you 19, gives you a total of 86. Richard? Yes, what well Lizzie does indeed do his rounds in uh, Greendale, which is supposed to be in the, in the Lake District. Let's take a look at the rest of the answers. Let's take a look at the, the top three that people seem to be having trouble with. Do you know Cabot Cove? Very, very dangerous place to be. No. Murder, she wrote. It's, oh. it's Jessica Fletcher's hometown, supposedly on, on the coast of Maine. Would have scored you 15 points. Sunnydale is, uh, some people will be screaming at the screen now, it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Sunnydale. Oh. And Lanford? Roseanne. It is Roseanne one. and would have only scored you one point, so very well done oh. if you got Lanford. <laughs> OK, thanks, Richard. At the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid it's Kath and Stephen. Oh, it's, we're just not giving you the right categories, no, are we? No, not, no. <laughs> well, I'm really sorry that we have to say goodbye to you at the end of the second round. I had high hopes of you making it all the way through, through to the final. You, you've let me down. <laughs> no, no two ways about it. Um, but no, you've been fantastic contestants. Thank you so much for playing. Brilliant. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> We've already said goodbye to two teams. It's now time to find out which of our remaining pairs will be playing for today's jackpot, which currently stands at an impressive £4,000. <laughs> OK, Team Lasagna, Liz and Becky, <laughs> you are now going head-to-head -head on up to three questions. You can now confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the opposing pair and you will win that question. The first team to win two questions will be going through to the final and playing for the jackpot. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> right, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many papal names as they could. Papal names, Richard. Yep, we're looking for any name that has been used by a serving pope between the years 1900 and 2010. Just looking for the name, not the number. So if there's been more than one, it just counts once. OK, thank you very much. Well, Leslie and Angela, because you've played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. So, papal names. OK? Yes. You've got a name. What is it? We've got a name. Um, we think Pious. Pious. OK. Liz and Becky. OK. So I only know John Paul and Benedict. So I think Benedict. Benedict. Yeah. Benedict. We have Pious. We have Benedict. OK. Pious first. Does that have a papal ring to it? Pious. It is correct. <laughs> 17. <laughs> Very good answer. Liz and Becky are going with Benedict. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people knew Benedict. <laughs> 36. So, after the first question, Leslie and Angela are up 1-0. Richard? Uh, yeah, Pius was a great answer. Three 20th century popes, Pius X, 11th and 12th. There were six names in all, and there's one name that would have beaten Pius, actually, on the list. Very well done at home if you got Leo. Uh, Leo XIII was pope from 1878 to 1903, so just qualified. There's Pius with 17, Benedict with 36. Obviously, the current pope, Joseph Ratzinger, takes the name Benedict. Uh, Paul with 38, John with 41, and John Paul with 50. OK, so, after the first question, Team Lasagna are up 1-0. Here is your second question. Liz and Becky, if you want to stay in this game, you have to win this point. OK. 
Okay. If Team Lasagna win, they are through to that big money jackpot final. Okay, second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many of the Ocean's Eleven actors as they could. Ocean's Eleven actors. Richard? Yes, we're looking for any actor who was part of the Eleven in the 2001 film Ocean's Eleven. Okay, Liz and Becky, you get to go first this time. Okay, now we need an answer. <laughs> <laughs> right, do we have an answer? Liz and Becky. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. <laughs> Said very quickly after much <laughs> deliberation. And having never mentioned him once during the conference. <laughs> but when you said it, it just wow. goes to be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, Leslie and Angela. Matt Damon has been said. We're going to go for George Clooney Matt to Damon play Damon. safe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. OK. I'm just wondering about the concept of playing safe at this stage. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, OK, there we are. We have Matt Damon. We have George Clooney. Liz and Becky went for Matt Damon. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Matt Damon. Yep, it's right. Yeah. 27 people said Matt Damon. Leslie and Angela have gone with George Clooney. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said George Clooney. Right. Oh, 81. <laughs> 81. So, after the second question, it is one apiece. Richard. Obviously, there's 11 answers here. There's a couple of very big ones at the top, but there's a few pointless answers, actually. Um, let's take a look. Uh, Shelbo Quinn, who plays Yen, would have been a pointless answer. Eddie Jemison, who plays Livingston, would have been a pointless answer. The wonderful Carl Reiner, who plays Saul Bloom. All of those are pointless answers, so very well done if you said those. Uh, Scott Kahn and Casey Affleck play uh, Carl Loving Brothers. Scott Kahn, two. Casey Affleck, five. Don Cheadle with... Oh, uh, I tell you what, we were being rude about those, vul those uh, vultures, Liverpudlian accents. I know, Don oh, Cheadle's Don Cheadle's, Cheadle's Cockney. Cockney. They got away with two crimes in that film, didn't they? <laughs> uh, Don Cheadle would have scored you uh, six, or as he would have said it, I've scored you six. <laughs> uh, Bernie Mac also scored six. Uh, Elliot Gould with nine. Matt Damon, there were 27, and, and way out in front. Brad Pitt with 74, and George Clooney, we've already heard, with 81. Very well done if you got all 11 of those. OK, thank you, Richard. Right, now... This is the important question. Whoever wins this question is through to the final and will be playing for that jackpot of 4,000 quid. Right, here is the third question. Listen carefully. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries with more than 100 Summer Olympic golds to their name. Richard. Yeah, there are 13 countries who've won 100 or more gold medals in Summer Olympics between 1894 and 2008. 13 countries, and we're looking for the most obscure. OK, Leslie and Angela, you go first. Sure? Yeah. OK, yeah, Leslie and Angela. We're not entirely sure about this, but um, we're going to go with um, Japan. Japan. OK, Liz and Becky. Japan has gone... Well... What about Russia? Because that's quite a big country. Yeah. And then there's Kenya for the running. Well done. Yeah. American um, do. American. <laughs> we're going to go for Kenya. OK, you're going to go for Kenya. So we have Japan, we have Kenya. Leslie and Angela have said Japan. Let's see if that is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Japan. Oh, it looks like Japan's a good answer. Oh, very good. A very, very, very good guess, if that was a guess. Liz and Becky have gone for Kenya. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Kenya. Oh. Oh. Bad luck, Liz and Becky. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means after three questions, Team Lasagna are through to the final. <laughs> Richard. 
Yeah, that's unlucky, Liz and Becky. You did the right thing, though. Russia would have scored uh, many more points than 13, so you had to go for a, a more obscure answer. And Japan really paid off. It's a great answer. Won 114 gold medals, the Japanese, up to 2008. Let's take a look at the countries that have won uh, 100 or more. Hungary. This was with one point. Hungary. Finland with two. Sweden with four. East Germany, seven. Italy, 10. Japan, 13. France, 17. Great Britain, 37. Australia, 38. Germany, 46. China, 65. Russia would have scored you 72 points. And the top of the list, the United States of America. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head -head is Liz and Becky. Oh, dear. Well, you answered pretty well in, in all these categories. Kenya was the only thing that, that lets you down. But uh, your reasoning was good. You will be back next time. Yes. This is only your first time on Pointless. So yeah. you can look on this as a, a sort of dry run, really. What are your tactics going to be next time? Get to the final. <laughs> it's going to be our main tactic. If more people had that tactic... Yeah, that's a good tactic. <laughs> that's a good tactic. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's the one thing in common with all our finalists, actually. They've all got to the final. See? <laughs> You've been fantastic contestants. Thank you very much for playing. Goodbye. <laughs> but for Leslie and Andrew, it's now time for our Pointless final and the chance to win £4,000. <laughs> So congratulations, Leslie, Angela, Team Lasagna. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. Well done. Very well so done. Well. Now, though, you have the chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £4,000. Now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no-one else could think of. Now, we've had two pointless answers today, which you both gave. You just need to find one more pointless answer now, and you can go home with that jackpot. Firstly, you've got to choose a category, and here are your three options. You can go for American sport, classic British soul, or world geography. American sport, classic British soul, world geography. What's it going to be? Oh, definitely yeah. not the sport. <laughs> and definitely not geography. So we'll It'll go for the classic, classic British, British soul. soul. You said that beautifully together. <laughs> if I had just got a guitar, maybe, perhaps we could... <laughs> perhaps we, we could um... OK, let's find out what the question is going to be. You are going for classic British soul. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Dusty Springfield top 40 singles as they could. Is that brilliant or not? It's brilliant. Oh, well, there we are. Excellent. Richard. We're looking for any single released by Dusty Springfield or with her as a featured artist, which has reached the UK Top 40 prior to May 2010. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that 4,000 quid is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Yeah, I would... Yeah, yeah. I think all I see is you... What about... Um, Windmills of, of Your mind. mind? Was it a Top 40 hit? I don't know. It might be an we'll album one, that, that might be. Mm. Um, there's also Island of Dreams with the Springfields. Yeah. Isn't there? Yeah. Stay a while. Stay a while's a good one right. to choose, isn't it? So, uh, stay a while. All I see is you. Well, I don't know about Win Mills because that might not be a thing. No, we'll go with the other one you said. Well, what about losing you? <laughs> so many. <laughs> there is a lot to choose from. It's right. choosing the obscure one. So, we'll go for Stay a while, losing you. An island of dreams. Yeah. Wow, stop the clock. There we are. With time to spare. And a smile on your faces. This is so good. We were looking for Dusty Springfield top 40 singles. I now need your three answers. What are you going to say? All I see is you. All I see is you. Island of dreams. Island of dreams. What was the other one? Stay a while. Stay a while. Now, of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Stay a while. We think yeah. stay, a stay a while. Stay a while, we'll put that last. Uh, which should we put first? Which is your, your least confident shot at a pointless? The one they did with the, she did with the oh, spring. Island, of, Island, Island of, of Dreams. OK, so we do Island of Dreams first. Yeah. All I see is you. All I see is you. Stay a while. There they are. There are your three Dusty Springfield top 40 singles. Just one of those has to be pointless for you to win that £4,000 jackpot. OK, let's go with your first one. Let's go with Island of Dreams. You said this was your least confident answer. Let's see how many people said Island of Dreams. Oh! 
Oh, ho, ho. What was wrong with that? I don't know. She did it with the Springfields. I thought it might not oh, have been a top 40. 40. Maybe it was yeah, an album been top 40. Well, unfortunately, it's not a pointless answer. So you only have two chances left at today's jackpot. OK, but you knew that. You said that was your least confident yes. answer. So we've just got that out of the way. I was just to clear the barrels. Right, we're looking for Dusty Springfield top 40 singles. Your next answer, All I See Is You. You were a little bit more confident with this. Let's see how our 100 people reacted to All I See Is You. Well, they thought it was right. Yeah. It's right. Down it comes, into the 50s. This has to go all the way down to zero to be pointless for you to win that £4,000 jackpot. Still going down. Still going down. Oh, look at that. Oh. Who was this person? One person. I don't know, Miss D. Springfield. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's fine. It's not... That wasn't your most confident answer. It's not pointless. One person knew it. You only have one final chance to win today's jackpot. You said this was the one you were most confident in. Stay a while. Let's see if it's correct and how many people said stay a while. This for £4,000. We were looking for Dusty Springfield top 40 singles. It's right. It's right. All I see is you came down to one. This you said you had more faith in. This has to go further down. Let's go all the way down to zero, into the teens, then to single figures. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, dear. Unfortunately, I can't believe that. Oh, that, that Miss D. Springfield in our 100 people. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that crucial Pointless answer. Mm. It eluded you. That just. one. He was a real fan, the one. That one. Yeah. Oh, dear, a oh dear. Fan. A real fan. So I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £4,000. You were so close. So that rolls over to the next show, but you have been amazing and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. So well done. <laughs> oh, so Richard. Uh, that was very, very, very unlucky. Uh, Island of Dreams we didn't show you because it's, she, it's the Springfields rather than her as well. There were eight pointless answers and three top ten hits here, and I hope you don't know any of them. I really do. Oh, we will. Um, going back, I'll try anything. Uh, in the middle of nowhere, it was a top ten hit. Uh, little by little, nothing has been proved. Reputation, that was her most recent top 40 hit. Some of your loving and... Your hurt and kind of love. Do any of those ring bells? No, all of them. Oh. No, all of them. <laughs> so sorry. I think that's the closest we've ever seen to a jackpot without having a jackpot. I know. <laughs> that, that doesn't help, does it? That's three <laughs> lots of history. We've yeah. yeah. Oh, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Leslie and Angela. It's been fantastic having you on the show. You've been wonderful contestants. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show we'll be playing for. £5,000. <laughs> Join us next time to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>